let's go. <laughs> Hi guys. <laughs> Welcome guys. What's happening, everybody? I'm screaming. Welcome to uh, Beauty and the Beast episode six. I'm Beast the Gamer. This is Kate. How you guys doing today? Uh, we wanted to uh, bring you into our room. This is where this is where all the magic happens. This is where we play our video games. You know, she she plays with the joystick in here. And uh, we wanted to uh, welcome you guys back to the show. Thank you for sticking with us. We know we've been a little off. Yeah, we haven't been uh, doing our Busy. show show like we like we're supposed to. I wanted to tell you guys a little bit. Maybe I'll make a video on it. What my life entails. I, I'm a pretty busy guy. I work eight hours a day. I work 40 hours a week at least. Today they wanted me to work 16. Yeah. And uh, I, I declined, happily declined. But I'm really busy, and sometimes it amazes me how many videos I get out to you guys. And I don't feel obligated to do it. I just feel like it's a part of who I am at this point. I like to do things to completion, and uh, I see a goal in my mind of where I'll be in a few years on YouTube. And uh, it's a pretty positive place. And, you know, I always believe that your attitude determines your altitude. And mm -hmm. so... I'm on this uh, this path of success, and success for me is to touch people and make people happy, and and create engaging content. And um, I think we're going to be doing okay today. We got a little bit of us, something different. A little bit of us. Uh, you guys are watching uh, Mercenary Kings for PS4 in the background. It's a game that we haven't even played yet, but it came out free for PS4 uh, with PlayStation Plus. But we'll be playing it. Uh, what you see is us playing it actually for the first time. And so we'll probably uh, get together on the next episode and give you guys our thoughts on that. But uh, we went on our, our vacation. Now we're back. We're getting back into the swing of things. How are you liking it? Yeah. Yeah. It's normal life again. She bought, she bought herself a new laptop today. She's, she's a MacBook Pro girl. Now she, uh, she had to get um, one with Windows, Windows 7 for her job. So she bought a new laptop today. And for my schooling. Yeah, because she's getting ready to go back to school. Wait. What are you going to school for? Um, I haven't decided, but I'm leaning toward web development. Web? You guys know my, my channel is going to be bang bang. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. It's, it's so good to be back with you guys. This really does mean a lot to me doing the Beauty and, Be Beauty and the Beast show. And uh, I'm happy I got my baby with me. You guys thought we were breaking up last episode. And you're just such a beauty. If anybody else calls you beast, I'll rip their lungs out. Uh, yeah, guys, you guys, uh, we we hit you all up with that uh, April April Fools. Fools gag the last episode. She's leaving. She's taking all the kids. <laughs> she's taking all of them, even the two that yeah, don't. Even the two that aren't mine. <laughs> she's taking all the kids. Yeah. Some uh, some pretty uh, interesting news came out uh, just recently about the Last of Us with the PlayStation Four, and. Um, the Last of Us for PS4 is called The Last of Us Remastered. I guess they couldn't take uh, the definitive edition. <laughs> so The Last of Us Remastered is coming to the PS4 this summer, and it's going to be 60 bucks. Now, uh, uh, $60, that is a, a pretty you know, high price for something that yeah. you've already pl played before, but it does have uh, remap textures. It, it, graphically, the aesthetic is much better. It comes with all the DLC, the Abandoned Territories DLC. It includes the upcoming Reclaimed Territories DLC uh, multiplayer pack. And uh, Neil Druckmann, Troy Baker, and Ashley Johnson are going to be doing commentaries during the cutscenes of the game. Uh, 60 bucks with all the DLC and graphically, you know, much better than the original. What do you think? Uh, well, I didn't play the original. I enjoyed watching you play it because it was like a movie. And it was real awesome, so I have a feeling we're definitely gonna get this version. <laughs> yes. And um, I guess sixty bucks is okay because I'll actually play it this time. Oh, you suck for not playing it. Tell her she sucks for not playing. It. I don't care no. if you watched it. I just bought the game. It was again. just as fun watching it as playing it. I'm sure. I bought the game a couple days ago for my older brother. Um, my older brother Joe. He's uh, like my best friend, and um, he he's. What does he play all day? He plays Resident Evil 5. Yeah. <laughs> or God of War. Resident Evil 5. That's the game he plays like it's, you know, out of style because he doesn't go out and buy games anymore. It is out of style. He, he married a woman who is really not into games and kind of like frowns upon him for gaming. And so he like plays the only game that he had left. 
can I go over his house? He still has a nice little collection, but to him, uh, Resident Evil 5 is like the latest, you know, most amazing thing. He comes over and checks out my stuff, and he's like, ah, his eyes are so big, he can't believe it. But um, I got him um, The Last of Us, and he's extremely... He's very happy. Extremely excited he about so it. He's so happy. Uh, but you guys let us know, this is something that you'll be getting, this uh, Last of Us remastered. It has been a remaster. It has a new master. It's remastered yeah. <laughs> for the PS4. Um, I think this is going to be good for a lot of people who bought the Xbox One, who are coming over from. I mean, who bought the PS4, who are coming over from the 360. Because a lot of people uh, actually switch teams uh, when the PS4 and the Xbox One were released. A lot of you know the Xbox 360 did. Re you had an Xbox 360 when I met you. Yeah. And. Uh, a lot of people swapped over when the Xbox One and PS4 came out for a lot of different reasons. And I know a lot of them watching the PS3 were like, Oh, damn it, we don't get this game, The Last of Us. Now if you got a PS4, you can play The Last of Us. Shout out to the guys with the Xbox Ones who don't have it, you know. Maybe uh, the PS5 will have, you know, another version of it. But I'm really excited about it. I, I wouldn't want to pay $60 for it, but some of the DLC I haven't even played. I did beat... Um, the Left Behind DLC. Yeah. I don't get into the multiplayer too much, but um, I probably will now you on the PS4. Start, yeah. I probably will now on the PS4. I should probably get some footage just to you know have a little bit of fun. We uh, saw Titanfall guys for the uh, Xbox 360. Uh, she saw it today. I saw it yesterday. It came out yesterday on the 360, and uh, uh, you know Xbox One. That was their baby. That was the the big seller for the Xbox yeah. One. That was the number one thing that the Xbox One had going for itself, and I think they did the really, <laughs> they did really well um, creating, uh, you know, this hype around the game for Xbox One and for the PC. And uh, the Xbox 360 version came out. I'm not even gonna say anything. What do you think uh, if you had to draw a comparison between the three? Because we saw all three. There, there's actually a link, not a link, but there's a video on IGN. It might, I might link it in the description here. But if it's not there, you can always go on IGN and check it out. What do you think about the three? Well, the Xbox One and the 360 look very, very similar. And I'm starting to guess that that's why they didn't show many <laughs> videos of the 360 version before it came out. Well, I, I said that um, during the Beastly yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I talked about it with you, and I said it on my show, The Beastly Thoughts. And, and uh, not too nerdy said it on our show, too. That uh, it probably was so close to the Xbox One version that if anyone had a 360, instead of going out and spending $500, they could just spend 60 bucks and play it on their Xbox 360. It looks Microsoft got them. Microsoft, yeah, they screwed a lot of people over. Um, it looks incredibly similar on, across all three platforms. Of course, the Xbox One does have graphically more intensive gameplay. I mean, you can see finer detail. And shadows. Yeah, there's shadow effects on the buildings on the 360. I mean, the Xbox One version that do not exist on the 360 version. Clouds in the atmosphere yeah. look a lot better on the Xbox One and the PC version. Uh, finer, minute details inside. The, the Titans look a lot better. It's like the Xbox One version looks very similar, but it's like through a filter, a, cloud, yeah, a cloudy a, type it's filter. It's a little dulled. But the speed of the game looks um, just as you know fast as the uh, Xbox One version and the PC version as well. So it doesn't look like it's, it's really slowed down the way a lot of people said it was. Not really, from it, the video I saw. It looks really good. And uh, I just, I'm just i wondering now if there's going to be any backlash of people. Or I mean, of course the Xbox 360 version is going to sell more than the uh, Xbox One version for sure. You think? How many Xbox 360s do you think are out there? Yeah, but how many people actually use them still? Well, <laughs> how many Xbox One sold? I mean, Xbox One may have sold four and a half million, may maybe by now, maybe if they're lucky. Um, and there are untold millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of Xbox 360s. I don't know the exact. That's a lot of millions. Yeah, it's untold. <laughs> I don't know. You guys might hear Nova in the background arguing with her sisters. They're out there. They, they've been thrown into the cornfield while we do our... The cornfield? Our, yeah. They've been banished to the cornfield. You guys ever seen that old uh, Twilight Zone episode? The little boy... The little kid. He banishes you to the cornfield. You guys better be careful while I banish you to the cornfield. Uh, but uh, it's definitely going to sell more on the Xbox 360 than it will on the Xbox One. That's going to be a much bigger community. My good friend and my other brother, Briar Rabbit, did a comparison video too. 
Oh yeah, I saw his. His comparison video is really, really good, and uh, you know, actually seeing it in in action. Yeah, while well, he was. Being, it was mm -hmm. really, really hard to tell the difference, and uh, he's he doesn't. Even, I know he doesn't care. He's just having fun. You go kill him, Briar Rabbit. You go get him, baby. And that's what you're doing. He's like, get all these noobs. Fuck him. Fuck him. Jan's like, relax, honey. Fuck him. Right, Briar Rabbit? Go get him. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm just curious as to what will be said about this in the future. Uh, I already said that the Titanfall for the Xbox One looked incredibly funny, but it did not speak next gen to me. And now seeing both of them side by side, it just doesn't. And now that we know that uh, Titanfall 2 is coming out to the PS4... It's a no now. EA has the rights to it. They said it's definitely going to be multi plat what, what do you think about that? Uh, I'll probably play it. Probably my ass. You know you're going to play it. But the only thing is, see, we play games together. As you guys can see uh, in the background, or in the foreground, because we're in the background. We're playing in the back today. Um, we like to play games together. We don't really play nearly as much games together anymore. Yeah, we used to play a lot more, but... We used to play a ton. Life happened. <laughs> do you like... Um, do you like DayZ, the PC game? Um, well, I never actually played it. I watched you play it, but there's not many people when you played it. So well, I, I was in, I was in, action. I was in noob servers because I'm a noob. I haven't played that game probably what, in about a month and a half. Yeah, for a while. Because, uh, and that's really one of the main reasons I wanted a new PC is to play that game. But I just, there are so many games. When you guys many games as we do, it's really hard to... It's hard to pick and choose. Yeah, it, it really is, but... I, I like it. I like uh -huh. the premise of it because the zombie thing is like one of my favorite things. You know that about me. One of them, it is like the main one. There's a zombie over there. Uh, zombies, to me, are really... To me, that really seems like it would be hell on earth. Like the scariest possible thing to see someone dead come after you. So it's always really intrigued me since I was a kid. I had a reoccurring nightmare. I mean, even now, I have this stupid nightmare. where And now, I'm, I, as soon as I'm... I, I, it's lucid now. But I have the nightmare now, I'm just like, oh god, here we go, I'll go right up to the attic and pull the string up and I'm good. Walk around and play games and stuff, but this this stupid uh, nightmare has been uh, reoccurring ever since I was a kid, where I wake up in this house, it's just like the house from Romero's uh, Night of the Living Dead, and there's zombies all outside, they're walking all slow and stupid, and as a kid I was wondering what to do, and then uh, I just started to figure out to go do what they did in the movie, just go up in the attic and relax. So as now, you know, now it happens, my big ass climbing up the, 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 the little ladder in the back, you know, going up there and I just chill. But zombies are really intriguing to me. And uh, Sony Computer, um, Sony Online Entertainment is releasing an MMO. If you guys don't know, an MMO is a massively multiplayer online game. Uh -oh. Yes, and uh, they, they have this MMO coming out that is called H1Z1, I guess because Day Z was taken. And the H1N1 is a virus yes. already taken. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that, swine flu? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so H1Z1 is a game that they revealed today. Sony Online Entertainment President John Smedley revealed today that the company has been developing a free-to-play MMO called H1Z1. Quote, it's a massively multiplayer game in which players fight for survival in a world where death is the only sure thing, Smedley said. The H1Z1 vi End quote. The H1Z1 virus devastated mankind and left nothing but death and destruction in its wake in a world nearly empty of human life where the remnants of humanity are in a fight against extinction amongst uh, those infected with the virus. Sounds good. And it's going to be a next gen game. So I can put my PC away. Ding ding. I can just use my PC for uh, editing videos now. Yeah. Well, I got a few PC games. I got Need for Speed. Right. You need to play. Um Oh no, that's on the PS4 now. What? Outlast. Well, we play Outlast. Yeah. I mean, but it's so hard for me to dedicate myself to... Now, you know what? I would absolutely drop everything and probably take a day off work if they remade Final Fantasy VII for the PS4. I you would... Take, you take a week off for that game. I would, and I'm pretty sure a hell of a lot of you guys would too. Would you take a day off or a week off if they remade Final Fantasy VII and did it justice? Maybe added maybe 10 or 20 hours worth of gameplay? Please. I call my boss and be like, hey, it'd be like that scene from Harlem Nights or Rage in Harlem. Hey, look it, I ain't never coming back. Take it easy. Uh, but it's true. Final Fantasy VII, please. And I'm I'm pretty excited about this H1Z1 game. Um, zombies. It's it's zombies. You can't go wrong with I zombies. I took a zombie quiz. Unless you let George Romero make it now. I took a zombie quiz. Oh, the, oh the. 
I would only live for three months. Three months? Yeah. It, I'd be worked. Did it have anything to do with being white? Oh my god. <laughs> it's a zombie. Let's go check it out. <laughs> These things are so cool. Have it as a pet. Yeah, I mean, you know. No. Some stereotypes are just true. It's like a white person will see a group of people running one way. They're like, let's go oh. see what it was. Where are they going? It's true. It must be a club down here. What's it called? The Run Club? Let's go check it out. It sounds hot. I used to be in denial, but it's Please, true. A black person will jump. A black person will match your speed. If you're running, like there's 20 people running real fast, the black person's like, okay, they're going this fast. I'm going faster. Let's go. You catch up to where we go. <laughs> Two seconds. Where are we going? Back there. I don't even know what happened. And, and that's just the truth. Um, did you guys see this Ninja Turtles uh, trailer? You guys saw it. Of course, everyone had to see it. Mm, well, as a as a child of the '80s, I was born in 1980. Uh, old. I gr but you like it. it. Makes you feel older, don't it? You're I still a child. Yeah, well, okay. she's got a good point. You know what's crazy over there? Um, I grew up with Ninja Turtles, and I feel like you know I was at the start. Of, I wasn't the start of it, and I saw it go through its phase. And when the Turtles movie came out in the '80s, it was a shit. It really was. I was like, oh, this is the best thing ever. <laughs> It really was, and they, they really did the turtles justice. I liked it. I don't know, because she watched it with me. I think it was the first time you watched it? No, I've seen the turtles movie before. That was your brother. I think so, yeah. I mean, your, your brother looked like a turtle. Um, uh, at, at any rate, I uh, grew up with the turtles, and I love the turtles, and uh, the movies, up until the third movie, which is at, looked like Muppets meets Lizards, it was terrible. <laughs> Um, I thought the Turtles movies part one and part two, the Secret of the Ooze, are really good and it captured the whole feeling of the cartoon. This one here, not so much. I don't know, I'm not going to judge it before it comes out. But from what I saw, oh uh, god, the Turtles are like 10 feet tall. They look scary though, they look really creepy. I like that part of it. Well, yeah, they do look a little they're creepy. Huge. Yeah, but they look like they're at least 7 feet tall. Yeah. And in the cartoon, they're supposed to be 4 and a half feet tall, they're supposed to be real short. Now they're fucking huge and, and super creepy looking. And then there's Megan Fox. Yeah. Kill me now, please. This chick can't act. Her face it looks like uh, someone melted a plastic, uh, you know, solo cup and, and formed a human face out of it. A I solo cup? Yeah, I can't stand her. I can't do it. I can't stand her. She's a no-talent actress, and it's just... People put her in movies because she's supposed to be attractive. But, I mean, she might have a unique look, I might, might say that. But to me, she's not attractive. She looks artificial, and you know, I don't like robots. But I just don't like her acting. Yeah, I don't like her. I just her acting and her thinking that she was like some kind of superstar because she's in one. Michael Bay made you, bitch. And I don't call every woman a bitch, just the ones that make me mad. Okay, <laughs> so I don't know what to think about this Turtles movie. I guess we'll get back with you guys after it comes out. We've been watching Bates Motel. No spoilers. Some people might not have seen it. It's about Norman Bates. Spoiler! Uh, it's really good, though. It, it is good. Um, it it kind of caught me on guard a little bit. It's like the what what happened before the movie, right? Yeah, like, well, as a kid, obviously, and, the mother's alive, so... Well, yeah, but I want to know if it's going to get into the movie. If like, you guys... It's going to have to get up to that point. If you guys want to know what Bates Motel is about, watch... I think it came out... I know it came out... In this, I want to say the late 60s, uh, but it might be the early 70s, uh, the original uh, Psycho, Psycho, Psycho yeah. which is still touted as like in the top two or three whole best horror movies I believe of all it's time. number one. It might be number one. Go on IMDb.com. IMDb it might be number one. It's really, really good. I it's very it. atmospheric. Um, I want to say Hitchcock made it. I think Hitchcock did. But uh, the Bates Motel uh, show is really good. I, I really like it. We watched the first season. And um, the actress, I forget her name, but she's, she's normally in big, you know, box office films. Yeah. And uh, she, uh, she's really, really good in this movie. I really like her. And uh, I think she means well, but, uh, you know, ultimately she's the catalyst that turns Norman Bates into a fuck up. Yeah, and, of course she is. Yeah, well, it, it is what it is. Um, and from the second son, guys, I don't have the actual numbers, but this was reported on today. I think it was at GameSpot.com. Yeah. The number one selling PlayStation Network game of March. PSN game, not physical copy. I don't know how well it did as far as physical copies, but I'm probably going to guess that it's the number one selling PS4 game. Uh, but it's definitely the number It's the number one sold PlayStation Network game, uh, followed by 
um, Metal Gear Solid uh, Ground Zero for the PS4. Yeah. What did you think about that game? You beat it before I did. I loved it. Loved it. It was... <laughs> White girl. <laughs> White girl. <laughs> Look, I really liked that game. Um, it was super fun. I got 100%. I was the evil side, which was, I think, funner. More fun. Than oh, you corrected <laughs> yourself. <laughs> more fun than um, the good side that I watched you play. Yeah, well, being good takes discipline. If you're going to be bad, just fuck it. But Yeah, uh, and you can just randomly walk past someone and whip them with your chain. Yeah, well, that part does... See, it makes the game a lot easier because you can just kill anybody to power up your specials and no, stuff. No, that actually didn't. I found out. Oh, okay. Killing civilians doesn't. Oh, okay. But well, killing the bad guys does. Well, um, I really like the game, too. I didn't get 100% because I don't have time for that shit. I work 40 hours a week. But then again, I'll see how you do it. You, you're a homebody. You're a mother. You work from home. I two. distract the kids with alphabets and your baby can read videos. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, she likes to read anyway. But, yeah, um, that game, it, it sold really well. I'm looking forward to yeah. more games coming out. Uh, we got Destiny coming out this year. And I'm really looking forward that. to that. Oh, and... Um, Watch Dogs. What was that other one? It was like the... The Division. Oh, uh, yeah. Tom Clancy's The yeah. Division. Tom Clancy that. was murdered. That's what I think. Shh. Did you guys know I like conspiracies? Um, <laughs> Alright guys, we're coming down to the end of the show. And this is something new. And uh, you know, Let us know in the comment section if you like seeing uh, seeing us up here in the, in the corner of the screen along with the gameplay. And if you do, we'll continue to do this because I like... I like Who wouldn't like seeing us? I we're like, awesome. I like being next to you. It's just, it just makes me feel good. Alright. Um, we got a question for you guys this week. And uh, we're going to start doing these questions once a week. And this will, um, you know, it'll uh, get reactions and get, you know, really turn the gears inter your interactions with, our, with mm -hmm. our subscribers. And this week's question, actually, I'm going to let my peanut read the question to you guys. I don't have a monocle or a top hat All or right. a cane. The question of the week is, if you had the tech know-how... And the staff you needed, and were given the opportunity to develop an existing game franchise. The next installment, what game would it be, and why? Oh, so in 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 short, if you uh, if you had like a blank check, and you had some of the greatest video game developers, and you had a great staff, and you had your own vision. Um, and you had the opportunity to create the next installment of any franchises out there right now. Which one would you pick and why? And tell us why you think, I mean, what improvements you'd make over the previous installments. We want to know. Thank you, guys. I would pick. What would I pick? The Last of Us. No. I think you wouldn't do the next installment of that game? Hmm. I don't know. The game I would do would be Resident Evil. Ooh, that's a good one because six was terrible. I'd do Resident Evil because Capcom's fucking idiots, uh, and they need to take Resident Evil back in the direction that they, want, they see Call of Duty doing well. They see Battlefield. Like, okay, well, let's have Battlefield and Call of Duty with zombies. It's a no brainer. It doesn't work. It doesn't. Yeah. Idiots. It's not fun. Resident Evil was the first survival horror game that actually made waves in the world, and it created a whole new genre. And now it's completely lost because it, it doesn't know what it wants to be. It lost its identity. And if I had the opportunity and a great staff, I'd get together some of the original creators of Resident Evil. I'd get together people who made games like uh, Fatal Frame. Um, get together people who made, you know, some of the great horror games of our time. And um, we'd, we'd hash it out and recreate Resident Evil and put it back on the pedestal it needs to be. What about you? I don't know yet. You're going to have to come back to me next week. Okay, she'll have her answer next week. Thanks for hanging out with us, guys. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.